Welcome, New Mount Zion Church family and visitors, to another virtual Sunday School class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we thank you for blessing us with your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for loving us and for giving your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins and to rise on that third day with all power in his hands. Lord God, we ask that you will prepare our hearts to study your word, that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to respond in obedience as your word goes forth. We pray for understanding as we are led by the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will bless this class and every class, every student, every teacher that exalts the name of Jesus. We pray your blessing on the under shepherd of this church for his family, our church family, and the body of Christ as a whole. We ask that you will bless us, Lord God, to be a blessing. Use us for your purpose and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The date is March the 26th in the year 2023. To our visitors, our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are, with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. This quarter's theme is, Jesus is Lord. Despite what you see or experience, despite who appears to be in charge, Jesus is still Lord. Mankind has a limited realm of authority or influence in the earth for a limited space and time. If a man has been evil or good, if he has loved or hated, his days are numbered and his love or hate dies with him. But the authority, the Lordship of Christ, transcends time, space, principalities, and powers. It cannot end. It cannot be contained. It cannot fail. One day, all will confess that Jesus is Lord. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. The gospel holds the power to save everyone who believes from the dominion of darkness and deliver us into God's kingdom, where Jesus is Lord. Today's lesson scripture, Mark the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 13, and verses 18 through 20. The lesson focus. Tell of the mercy and release you've experienced through Christ. Our theme talk for today. How great is the Father's love that we should be called the children of God? When was the last time you paused to consider the awesome miracle that the Almighty God of all creation wants you to be a member of His family? Human logic does not allow for such reasoning because we know we are sinners, undeserving of His loving kindness and acceptance. Yet God has seen fit to substitute His sinless Son for us, allowing Him to pay the price for our sins. Because Jesus has paid our sin debt, only he is worthy to be Lord. Today we are reviewing the final lesson of Unit 1, called From the Margins of Society, with Lesson 4, Jesus Overpowers Legion. Demon Possession when Jesus entered the country of the Gadarenes, he and his disciples encountered a demon-possessed man. 
He appeared like a wild animal, naked, living in a graveyard. The demons inside the man gave him extraordinary strength. The people in the city had to chain him because he was a threat to himself and others. He constantly cried out in torment and cut himself. No human being had been able to help him in any way. An Encounter with Jesus But Christ came to him to release him from bondage. Immediately, the demons recognized Jesus as the Son of God and asked Jesus not to harass them. The all-powerful Savior commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. The head demon inside the man responded to Jesus by using his full name, hoping to give him authority over Jesus, but that did not happen. Deliverance Jesus demonstrated his authority over the unclean spirits, even though they were legion, many. Jesus looked outnumbered, but he wasn't. The demons begged to be sent into a nearby herd of swine, and Jesus granted their request. Once the demons entered the pigs, the herd ran down a steep hill and drowned in the sea. Jesus wanted the onlookers to see Satan's destructive nature and his control over all evil forces. Freedom The man freed from the demonic bondage begged Jesus to become a part of Jesus' ministry. But Jesus sent him home instead to witness to his own people. Jesus saw this man's potential to have a significant impact on his Gentile community. The man obeyed and returned home. Glory to God Most Christians do not have a dramatic deliverance story like the demoniac in the graveyard. But all of us can talk about the gracious favor of God. Did he release you from a terrible job, a toxic relationship, financial troubles, or an addiction? Did he reveal a better way for you to live and fulfill his purposes in your life? Your story, your experience is always worth sharing and giving all credit and glory to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Section 1 is the life need and is intended for small group discussion. Discuss the psychological burdens that plague us. After reading Jesus Overpowers Legion in your student book, notice question 1. What burdens in life prevent people from enjoying the blessings of God? Question 1 asks us to consider such psychological burdens as fears, anxieties, addictions, despair, and lust. Each person is quite different, so not all people have the same psychological burdens. Nevertheless, everyone is plagued by at least one psychological burden, and more than likely, many have more than one. Furthermore, even as Christians, those burdens still exist though they can be overcome in Christ. Question 2. How have some of these burdens affected your life? Question 2 invites us to reflect on our personal struggles with psychological burdens. Some may have been in the past, while others may be only currently. Some may be a lifelong struggle while others were only in a particular period of their life. Whichever is the case, the more honest we are, the more we can be spiritually released from them. And question three, why does the compassion of Christ liberate you from the effects of these burdens? For question three, center only on Christ and not any on ourselves. Answers may include his love for us, his power to deliver us from such burdens, 
and his enduring faithfulness, all of which were demonstrated in his death on the cross and his resurrection from the tomb, but which continues during our lifetime walk in this world of unbelief. Section 2 is the Bible Learning Study Jesus' Dealing with the Demoniac For most people, the reality of demons possessing people is incredulous, even for many of us who have placed our faith in Jesus. Nevertheless, Scripture teaches us that those cases do occur, and for Jesus, such manifestations were quite common. His authority over devils became evident to the people of his day when he dealt with the man whom many evil spirits possessed and called themselves Legion. The Demon Possessed Man Our lesson scripture begins with Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 5, from the King James Version. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Verse 5 And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. After Jesus had miraculously calmed a storm while his disciples feared for their lives in a boat on the Sea of Galilee, they disembarked in the land of the Gerasenes. There a demoniac approached them, having come from a nearby graveyard. The man had dwelled among the tombs and was so strong that every man in that region had failed to keep him chained. In fact, whenever he was bound, he had burst the chains on his wrist and had cracked the irons around his ankles. Indeed, no one could subdue him, and night and day he screamed and and mutilated himself among the tombs which were in the hills. Question 4. What took place when Jesus exited the boat? Jesus and the twelve had been traveling to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Once they arrived at their destination, Jesus left the boat, and shortly thereafter a man with an impure spirit came out of a nearby burial ground to meet the Savior. Question 5. What was distinctive about the man whom Jesus encountered? The man was a crazed person, since he was tormented by demons. Also, the man seemed to possess superhuman strength. For instance, no one could either successfully bind him with chains or muster enough strength to subdue him. The Messiah's Authority Over Demons Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 13. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. 
Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Verse 13, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and they were choked in the sea. At this point in the biblical narrative, the demoniac saw Jesus from afar, and then he ran to him and fell to his knees before him. Quite strangely, the man then spoke to Jesus at the top of his lungs, asking what he intended to do to him while acknowledging Jesus to be the Son of the Almighty God. Moreover, the demoniac pleaded with the Lord not to torture him because Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of him. Unperturbed by this strange encounter, Jesus inquired of the man's name. He replied that his name was Legion, for, in fact, many unclean spirits dwell within him. These demons repeatedly begged Jesus not to exile them out of the area, but instead to cast them into a large herd of pigs that were feeding on a nearby hillside. Jesus permitted them to go into the pigs, and subsequently the herd dashed down a steep incline, fell into the lake, the Sea of Galilee, and drowned. Question 6. What did the tormented man do when he saw Jesus? At the sight of Jesus, the demon-possessed man rushed toward the Savior and bowed down before him. Then the man addressed Jesus as Son of the Most High God and begged Jesus not to torture him. Question 7. What answer did Jesus receive after asking his question? Jesus, after commanding the unclean spirit to leave its host asks the entity to identify itself. The shocking response came that its name was Legion. The reason for this is that thousands of demons were controlling the man they inhabited. And question 8. How did Jesus respond to the demons request? The multitude of demons implored Jesus to send them into a nearby herd of pigs, feeding on the hillside. In turn, Jesus permitted them to do so. As a result, the demonic spirits left their human host, entered the pigs, and plunged over a cliff into the lake where the pigs drowned. The Region of the Gerasenes When Jesus and his followers reached the other side of the lake, they landed their boat in an area called Gerasenes. Mark the fifth chapter, verse 1. The actual name of the region remains debated, with some Greek manuscripts reading either Gadarenes, Gergesenes, or Gerasenes. These differences in spelling could be due to variations in the way inhabitants throughout the surrounding area referred to the locale, Matthew the 8th chapter, verse 28, and Luke the 8th chapter, verse 26. The territory was mainly inhabited by Gentiles, which would explain the presence of a herd of pigs in the area, verse 11. Excavators working at a place called Kersey on the Sea of Galilee's eastern shore suggested this as the site of the event. There is a slope near the water 
that could have been the place of the pig stampede. Verse 13. Also, not far off are some cavern tombs that show signs of human habitation. Verses 2 and 3. The site includes the ruins of an early Christian church building and a memorial to the swine miracle. The Legion of Demons Scripture does not say how many demons possessed the man, but the word by which the demons call themselves gives us a hint. A legion, verse 9, the principal unit of a Roman army consisted of about 6,000 soldiers. However, the word legion had come to be associated with a great multitude of unspecified numbers. With so many demons inhabiting him, it's no wonder the man was in terrible distress. His actions were mournful and self-destructive. As Bible commentator Warren Wiersbe says, Satan came to destroy, but Jesus came to deliver. By the power of his word, he cast out the demons and set the man free. Demons even believe in prayer, for they beg Jesus not to send them into the abyss, the place of torment. Mark the 5th chapter, verse 7. Luke the 8th chapter, verse 31. It is encouraging to note that the demons did not know what Jesus planned to do. This suggests that Satan can know God's plans only if God reveals them. In fact, there is no evidence in Scripture that Satan can read the mind of a believer, let alone the mind of God. The Good News of God's Mercy Mark the fifth chapter, verses 18 through 20. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. Verse 20. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. When Jesus returned to the boat to embark on his journey across the sea to Galilee, the man whom the demons had formerly possessed implored the Lord to take him with him. Jesus, however, denied his request telling him to go home and relate how God had released him from demonic bondage and how the Lord's compassion had touched him. The man obeyed Jesus by sharing what the Lord had done for him with the people in Decapolis. Naturally, his testimony astounded those people. Question 9. What did Jesus direct the healed man to do? The man who had been demon-possessed kept imploring Jesus to let him go with him in the boat. Instead, Jesus told the man to return to his peers and share with them his personal account. In particular, the man was to report how the Lord had been merciful to him. People under the influence of demons. The New Testament makes numerous references to demoniacs, that is, people under the influence of one or more unclean spirits. The demonization the New Testament describes is distinct from various forms of physical and mental illness people may suffer. Jesus made it clear 
that demons possessed enormous diabolical power. The Gospels not only described Jesus casting out demons from their victims, but also related Jesus' direct speech to the evil entities. Furthermore, when Jesus was in the presence of a demon-possessed person, the unclean spirits often acknowledged who he was and cowered at his divine authority. Manifestations of demon possession included extraordinary strength, multiple personalities, and physical and mental afflictions. The last of these could involve muteness, deafness, blindness, seizures, crippling, and symptoms of mental illness. We will conclude this section with Window on the Word. Decapolis. Decapolis is a Greek word which means ten, deca, cities, polis. Although this league of cities was within the Roman Empire during Jesus' day, they functioned autonomously in many ways both with regard to Rome and each other. Furthermore, the Jewish people and the Greek slash Roman people in these cities often clashed culturally and religiously. These cities were situated east and southeast of the Sea of Galilee. Philadelphia was one of its prominent cities and today it is known as Amman, the capital of Syria. Section 3 is the Bible application. Comprehend true liberation in Jesus. When the compassion of Jesus delivers us from the web of sin and despair, we feel an utmost joy unlike any feeling of worldly bliss. After you have read in the section, If the Son sets you free, notice questions 10, 11, and 12. Why is Jesus the only one who can release us from evil? Why is the mercy of Christ important to you? And how do you convey Jesus' love to the people in need of God's compassion? Jesus declared about himself in John the 14th chapter, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The tangible ways Christ has shown his mercy to us may be through emotional or physical healing, deliverance from a sin, or restoration with God Almighty. We can have a Christ-like impact on others, whether through our words or deeds. It may be telling a hurting person their own story about how Christ has showered his mercy on them or it may be an act of charity to someone in desperate need. Section 4 is the Life Response Tell your appreciation for Christ's mercy. When Jesus delivers us from evil, it is an act of mercy because we neither deserve his act of compassion nor do we have the power in ourselves to break the evil chains that bind us. This is not only true for us, but it is also true for every human being, and that's why God bids us to tell our story to others, both transparently and humbly. I encourage you to read Our Merciful Lord in your student book and answer the questions there. You may keep the answers to yourself or share them with someone else who can celebrate with you their release from darkness. 
everyone who now follows Christ has such a release story to share, some more dramatic than others. Our key verse for today, Mark, the fifth chapter, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Praise the Lord our God, for his name is worthy to be praised. We praise God for you joining us today and for your support of the Sunday School Ministry of New Mount Zion. If it's the Lord's will, we invite you to join us for next week's lesson. Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Think about what questions you have about the resurrection of Jesus. And consider the real reason we take communion by reading the scriptures on the Last Supper. Let us close out our day's session as we look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, his mercy and love for us. We thank you for transforming our lives. Help us that we may share with others how good and gracious you are to us all. In Jesus' name we pray. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen.